uh, but predominantly our HQ is in Manchester um, and we've also got an office in Dublin in Ireland as well. So my experience, I've got hundreds of clients, hundreds of thousands of keywords on page one of Google in lots of tough industries. Um, we've launched over 500 websites for people. My team personally manages £200,000 a month of Google AdWords spend. Um, and in my strong opinion, SEO, since I've been doing it for the past nine, ten years, it hasn't actually changed. The fundamentals are still there. Here's some of the clients that we've worked on. Uh, Unipart in the car, car parts industry, Pickford's removals. I'm sure you'll recognise a few of those companies. Uh, and, and also outstanding branding as well. So, who in the audience has actually managed a search engine optimization or a Google AdWords account in the past for themselves or the company? Okay, so what, what was the process that you went through? Did you work with an agency or did you do it yourself? Uh, well, I've got different businesses, but um, I um, found of an advertising group anyway, so. Right, that's fair enough. <laughs> Um, so, so that's good. There's a few people that, that have actively managed uh, search campaigns. So back in the day, doing search engine optimization, you could launch a website and you could pretty much put links on other websites around the internet that were fairly relevant to that website and link back to your client's website. And, and it would rank. Um, a lot of people used spam farms and, and link and, and, and link building tactics that are now quite a bit out of date. So things have changed over the past few years. You need to be you need to get more relevancy in the websites that you're posting links on, um, and, and having a good website is absol absolutely fundamental to to success online. So last night I, I just quickly googled wedding rings. Uh, and Google search results has changed quite a lot over the last few years. And what you notice there, recently Google have introduced having four positions at the top that are actually paid ads. There's a shopping shop, Google shopping area as well. Uh, so it's quite a crowded space. Four or five years ago, the organic search section below this was a lot more prevalent and um, the paid ads didn't dominate the top so much. There's probably two at the top and, and then down the right hand side. So it is, it's becoming more competitive. And as well with the um, introduction of Google Maps and Google Shopping as well, it's, it's, it's ever increasing um, opportunities that are available on Google to ensure you know, that you get traffic to your website, you sell your products, and then there's a marketplace for you there to actually perform online. So a, bit, a little bit of history about Google, um, in the year 2000 and around that time you may have heard people talk about the Google dance. Um, it, was a, it was a term that would probably just came up in the industry for people to talk about the movement of a website up through Google's organic search, search engine and Google at that time didn't, didn't make that many updates to its database um, and it was, it was fairly easy to move up through the organic section. In the recent years, it's become more mainstream, and Google have rolled out updates called the Panda and the Penguin update. And the second one, the Google Penguin update, actually, it was like napalm death across the internet. Loads of websites just completely jumped off page one, disappeared off the search engine. Google were submitting penalties to websites, so people were wondering what the hell's gone on. And simple facts are, all of this spam that people have been creating over a number of years pointing to their website, Google have now decided that this isn't relevant anymore. So you need to start being more relevant, creating content that's you know, actually about your business and not just writing content and posting it anywhere just to manufacture search rankings on Google. So everyone was in a state of panic at the time. I remember being at uh, Internet World in 2012 and, and uh, we, we looked around Internet World and I remember all of the different companies that are in search look, um, they were getting calls off the clients and I kid you not, ever, the whole industry was in a state of panic because clients just disappeared off Google and people didn't know what to do. Google rolled out an update that basically deleted a, an entire section of the internet 
and people that were using tactics to, to, to get the rankings on Google and get traffic to the website, they could no longer do it anymore. And to be honest with you, in those days, the opportunities that are now available today weren't available. Like bloggers, you see, and people who, who, who have their own uh, YouTube channel, they, they didn't really exist. It was, it was the start, start of a sort of second generation of the internet that people were becoming more savvy, things were becoming more mainstream, and people were starting to understand what Google was and how to manipulate it for themselves. So you get a lot of start-at-home businesses and that type of thing. But, but the main thing is, as I said, is, is relevancy now. At this time, lots of people were kind of admitting that they, they posted spam across the internet to get the traffic. So Google introduced the disavow tool cleverly a few weeks after they did the Google update. What that allowed people to do was upload all of the bad links that they'd been posting for years um, and inform Google about them to actually delete them and not, not actually, you know, recognise those links anymore. Sort of own up to the fact that, yeah, maybe we were sort of manufacturing this kind of thing, what we do. After that, people were then removing links, so they were, they were dropping down the search engine even further, and then it was just getting worse and worse for everybody. I mean, our, our agency was getting loads of clients from other agencies that were ringing us saying, what the hell do we do? But at that time, nobody really had an answer. Google had literally pushed the button, and, and, it, was, and it, was, it was devastating for a lot of com companies. So, cleverly, Google's share price went up, more people were spending on Google AdWords, um, to get the traffic that they needed for their website because a lot of businesses only exist these days because of the search rankings and the amount of money that they spend with Google to get the leads and the sales on the website. It is competitive now, but there is answers. Um, and what I'm going to go through today is a few creative ideas and the type of tactics that we now use um, that are ethical, that work. We've got proven case studies for for companies, including Andy from Outstanding Branding, to, to actually get to the top of Google and stay there and maintain a position. So, as I said at the start of the presentation, people, SEO's not changed. You've got to get your website set up correctly, simple things like your page title, meta description, header tags on your website. Make sure that it's relevant to what you want to be found for. I kind of describe a website like a book in a library. If you walk into a library, you want to go to the right section if you want something that's about nature. So you've got to make sure the spine of your book reads exactly what those people are looking for. Then at least Google's database will recognize what your website's about. And then when people are searching for your products or services, you will be found for those things very easily. And Google has a number of factors that now rank a website. As I said before, the spammy link tactics in the past. Um, Google, this was from uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Moz, the authority in the search industry, published a report and it actually says that links are still the most influential factor to ranking a website. But those links are harder to, 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 to gain now and you've got to be a lot more creative in the way that you, you get the links back to your website. Some websites like the BBC, um, ASOS, naturally gain links. But therefore, but, but companies like Andy's company, Outstanding Branding, it's not so easy to get, people don't really talk so much about promotional products. So you've got to be creative in the way you're reaching out to blog, bloggers who are coming up with creative ideas to post content about your services. The mobile update, if, if you do a search on your mobile now, you'll see, let's say for example, let's search venues in Manchester. Google will actually tell you if, that web, if, if those websites on page one or two or three are actually responsive. And what I mean by responsive is the website opens and responds to whatever um, tablet, mobile phone, desktop that you're actually on at the time. And that is one factor these days that Google does actually take into consideration when ranking your website. Because I'm sure you've seen a website in the past where you go on your mobile and you have to zoom in now we make websites a standard that, that are uh, built to respond to any device. Even if the screen's 80,000 foot wide, you know, the website will perform at that level. Mobile search, um, buying decisions take place 
at the start on a mobile. So it's ever increasing that you need to think about getting right time Google and also making sure that 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 you come up on, on mobile search results. People then move on to desktop and then maybe an iPad to finish their transaction. But mobile searches a couple of years ago overtook um, desktop, so more people will search for things on the mobile now than they ever did, far more than any other device. And that, that's just a short infographic about, about that type of thing. So who has a responsive website for their business right now? Okay, uh, how long ago did you, did you um, lady at the back, did you, did you purchase that website and, and put it into place? Okay. Fantastic. So you're ahead of the curve then. And, and did you see rankings increase um, without doing anything extra just by launching the responsive website? So, so as I said, we've got around 500 clients and we launch responsive websites for people. And if the rankings aren't so great, two, three days later of, rank, of, of um, actually launching their responsive website, the rankings always increase. And that's no, it's th that, that's just the fact. Google uses that, to, that, that responsive nature of a website to rank it, and it will rank those websites above websites that are not so responsive. Who's main what you mean by a responsive website? Yes, so you can see there there's a um, Apple Mac screen, an iPad, and a mobile phone. So we'll build the website, so when you open it on the phone, it's, it's optimal for the phone. You don't have to zoom in. It's got, a, it's got a, a burger menu so you can navigate it correctly. Same with an iPad, it'll stretch and respond to the screen that the user is actually um, on. Uh, I, I thought, and uh, I've already mentioned it, but if you do search on Google something like Car Pass, you will see that responsive comment come up on the search results. So we'll take that into consideration when you, when you search for things in the future and just think about that. So, what tools do we use as an agency to help our clients? And these are not so secret anymore. Anybody can use these. Anybody in this room can subscribe to these. And these are the tools of our trade. Ahrefs, I'll show you a screenshot of the dashboard of that in a minute. You can put a website URL into there and it'll show the complete and utter backlink history to that website. So then, if, say we were working for British Airways, for example, we could put Virgin Airways into that, that tool and it'll tell us all the backlinks, all the referral domain names that are actually linking back to that site. And then what you can do from there is begin to reverse engineer what Virgin Airways have done. We can look at the opportunities that they've been actually putting together and putting links on. And then you can capture those opportunities for yourself. You can pick and choose. So what a general thing I'd usually do if, you, if you're researching for a company of yourselves, put your three competitors in this tool and see what it pulls back, see what opportunities and see what sort of landscape that they're building for themselves and then take the best bits from the, your competitors and then put it into your campaign. Uh, SEM Rush, uh, this is good for seeing traffic um, and it gives you a split of paid search and also organic search. Uh, it'll tell you what keywords a website ranks for and it'll do that without even having analytics uh, to that company's website. It's a sort of, it's, it's a good measuring stick when you first um, begin to do a bit of research uh, about a website or a company online. Obviously Google Analytics, um, who has logins to a Google Analytics account? So you'll see the not provided at the top. Now. Uh, a few years ago that wasn't so prevalent and you can see more of what people are searching for on your website. It's another clever thing Google have done to, to basically make you upgrade your analytics package so you can see all of the data and that is a very expensive thing to see. Uh, but, but in the past they, they gave you that as standard but now it's, they, they do hide a lot more information than they used to do. Um, a good one, and I, I was talking about content, Google's database, look, it loves unique content. So if on your homepage, what I would recommend, or any landing page of your website, run it through Copyscape every other week to see if people are copying your, your content and putting it on their website. Because if one of Andy's competitors in his industry 
puts his content on their website, it can actually penalise your website without you be, without even knowing. So refreshing the content on your website is absolutely key. Uh, and I'd recommend using Copyscape at least once or twice a week, um, depending on how competitive your industry is, uh, just, to, just to see if anyone's stealing your content because it's not ethical and it's a way of keeping on top of things. And Google, as I said, loves fresh content, so make sure yours is unique on your website, not copied and pasted from other areas of the internet, and just make sure you're keeping on top of people stealing your content. This is a dashboard for Ahrefs. Uh, it, it, you, can, you can download uh, Google spreadsheets out of this, out of this, um, this dashboard, and as I said, the backlinks, and the, referring, the difference between referring domains and backlinks is actually, referring domains is the number of websites that are linking back to your website. Whereas backlinks can be a thousand links on one website. What your aim is to do is to increase the number of referring domain names to your site. Um, that is something that Google looks at. And, and just putting two million links on one website used to work, but it doesn't work anymore. There's, you need to get varied content across as many different websites, especially websites that are on different so check where your links are coming from. Look at the IP address of that website. And there's tools to check the IP address of a website online also. To make sure that your links are coming from multiple sources and you're not spamming. Because you can actually spam without meaning to do it. Uh, this, is, this is SEM Rush. Uh, it's, as I said, a good measuring stick to see on the bottom left organic keywords and how people are finding your website in referral traffic how much of it comes from Facebook, how much of it comes from search engines, which search engine, YouTube, blogs online, anything. It's a good way of collecting data about, about your business and your industry and, and, and having it to hand so you can make decisions and see what people are doing and see who the movers and shakers are in your industry. So I went down to pitch um, a well-known sports company to, a few days ago. Uh, in London, Decathlon. Uh, they do around £2 million revenue online a month. Their main strategy when they launched was to launch stores, so they are continuing to do that this year. Uh, but that's a website that's got multiple categories on it. They sell cricket equipment, canoeing equipment, all sorts of different sports. So they also compete against companies like Evans Cycles, who, who just specialise in bikes. So for them to be ranked for keywords, just bikes related is a lot tougher than Ev Evans's job because theirs is just specific to bikes. So we were advising them how we can in particular look at their, 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 their bikes category because it's their biggest driver of revenue on their website. So what, what did we do? So I used all the tools that I've mentioned and a few more as well that I can send you after this presentation. We produced a roadmap. We looked at all their competitors' opportunities, where their competitors are getting links from looking at all the influential bloggers and Instagrammers and everyone in their industry that talks about the things that they want to be known about. One of the ideas we came up with in the meeting was um, contacting bloggers and creating a, and developing a tool that would actually be a map, an interactive map, to see where all the best bike trails in the UK are. So with that, it's a shareable piece of content you create a map with all of the best bike trails in the UK on the internet, people will start to share that. People will include it in their blog. And then you'll begin to get links naturally without having to force Google's database and, and, and do it in a more forced manner. Um, and pe and you, want, you want to be so creative that people do the job for you in the end. We also looked at what was converting out of their Google PPC account. Um, because what's the point in optimising a, a keyword organically if it's not actually converted into sales through their PPC account? There's no point at all. It's, it's great to be number one for bikes, but let's have a look if bikes actually converts into a sale. A more specific um, search term and maybe more of a long tail keyword might convert. So they're the, one, they're the opportunities that we want to look for and, and the low hanging fruit that we can knock over the line to, to really get some short-term success. The, the terms like bytes are, are more of a long-term strategy. Uh, and creating tools like I've mentioned, you can apply that, that, that tool idea 
to any industry. It's just purely creativity and how far your imagination will take things. We also looked at keywords that were gaining traffic and converting into sales that were on pages two, three, four, and beyond. Because if they're getting traffic on pages two, three, and four for keywords, if you knock them onto page one, the obvious uh, result of that is they're going to increase revenue um, and they're going to increase sales. So more pages, more keywords on page one, better. These are a couple of the couple of blogs that we found that were quite active in that industry. Um, you know, the, the, the set up by people at home, but the, the good pieces of content. So, and, and those those websites are really great for somebody like the Capcom to go and approach, maybe call them, have a coffee with them, and say, I've got this idea about a blog to put on your website. What do you think? Sometimes bloggers want to charge for that, but. Sometimes they do it because they like the, the unique content for their own blog. So when we're researching opportunities, we look at websites like these two, and there's many, many more. Um, we see if they rank for keywords themselves, because that's usually a good indicator as to the health of the website. So if this, if this bike blog, for example, ranks for the keyword bike blog, that's a good website to go and get your link on and post some unique content. Domain authority is a tool online, and years ago, and up until a few weeks ago, Google had a, an algorithm, and if you downloaded a, um, a plugin to your Google Chrome, um, your Google Chrome web browser, Google would give you a score out of 10, and it was called PageRank. But recently, that's defunct. They took that away, and people like myself and companies like myself and in-house marketing teams look at domain authority. And there's a tool online to check the main authority, and the lower the score, the better the website. I look at a website like an iceberg, and uh, there's pages on there's, there's keywords on page one, uh, there's keywords on page two. So what you can do, and you can do this for your own business, you can create like a, a map on a spreadsheet, and you can put all of the keywords into an iceberg shape or whatever shape you want to be honest, um, and, and begin to map out where your traffic's coming from, what is on page one, and then what are the priorities on pages two, three, and four that you want to push to page one. So I think that visual is quite a good way of explaining in layman's terms more, the more technical aspects of SEO, and, and if you get that ingrained in your head and, and how you approach a search campaign, I think it's a good way to start. So. How do we do blogger outreach? As mentioned, we do the research, we find the opportunities. For the Cathlon, we, we went, we, we scraped the entire internet in the UK and we looked for every single opportunity in every single department that they sell things in. Bikes, ev you name it, we did it. And we produced a spreadsheet. With this spreadsheet, we then can send that to the client and say, which of these opportunities do you like? So the client be, can, can be involved in the process of approving websites once they've passed our quality control checks. Then we make contact with the website via email. And as I said, you can meet these people. They do exist. Go for a coffee with them. Develop a relationship with a blogger is great because they'll, again, start to do your job for you if you get it right. Be creative. Ways to do this, guest posts, create an infographic about your industry or the bike sector, in this case in particular. Again, it's shareable content. People want to engage with that content, comment on it, and, and pass it on to other people because it's interesting and it's not just manufactured. You know, It's cl quite clear somebody's put a bit of work into it um, and, and, and it's something that's quite nice to read. Then once we've approved all of the links and we've made outreach to the bloggers and, and the people and the influencers online, uh, we, we create the content and then we pass that to the blogger and then they post it. In the past, when you when you when you place the link on a website, you could. For, I'll give you an example. Um, five years ago, I had a client in the underfloor he heating industry uh, who's actually been bought out by Travis Perkins now. 
for, for three, four years, he paid me specifically to place links on websites that just said the word underfloor heating that linked back to his website. But I told him for five years, I'm happy to do it for you, and he was happy to do it, but I knew that Google would update itself one day, so you couldn't do that. The, the Google Penguin update came, and guess what happened? He went from pay, number one on Google to the bottom of page one. What used to work didn't work anymore. So you've got to vary your backlink anchor text to every link you place online, posting back to your, your website now. So ensuring that it's varied, and, 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 and I'd probably say 50% of the links you get to your website these days, make sure that they're, they're actually mentioning your brand name. So we, we post um, links for Andy. A lot of the, blo the, the links that we place for Andy say the words outstanding branding. Others may say something about promotional umbrellas, but will vary the backlink to make it look natural to Google search engine. Because at the end of the day, why would one website have a million links um, that just say promotional items? It's not natural. People don't, that's, why would everybody do that? So you've got to keep it varied and, and not manipulate it in a way that's you know manufactured you've got to keep it varied and fresh um, so has anybody got can someone mention an industry that you work in and then maybe together we could come up with an idea of how my bike trail idea for decathlon could work for you because I know Andy will be asking me after it, how can you replicate that for my industry? So maybe we don't come up with it today, but what I'm trying to instill in you is get thinking about these ideas because they're fairly inexpensive to put together. Anyone can pick up a video camera these days. You can buy a nice camera from the shop and, and take some good images yourself. You can write content. These opportunities aren't just coming from people like me that own an agency or, or have been in the game a long time. These opportunities are open to anybody, and anybody can go and capture them. You've just got to be creative and think about your approach to the bloggers. It's like people send me CVs all the time. Be, they, I try to say people to be, get to the point and, and be quite concise with how you send me your, um, your information because you know it's boring if people keep hammering with stuff that's not fresh and unique. So same with bloggers. Approach them in a way that's quite clever. Send them a box. That's, that's got a nice gift in it. Uh, we work for a fashion label, uh, Forever Unique. Um, we, we, we approach celebrities, get them to write blogs about their dresses. Um, they, they take pictures and selfies of themselves on a night out before they go to an event. You know, it's a piece of content on a unique location on the internet and it's linking back to your website. It's brand exposure, but it's also ticking a box for Google uh, to show that you're getting more links back to your website and again they're doing the job for you you don't have to go out and do it um, from a local point of view there's lots of things you can do does anybody own a localized business in the room more natural right so carpenters builders physiotherapists in this in this um, idea creating a locations page so for example if I was a physiotherapist in Manchester I would create a, a contact us page. From that contact us page, I would create a page about every location in the Manche Greater Manchester area. So then when people, if I'm based here at Media City, but then if people search physiotherapist in Salford, there's a page about physiotherapy in Salford on my website. So on Google, that will start to appear. It's that page that will create. So the more of these types of pages that you create, and make sure, that, again, the content's unique on there. Make it engaging for somebody, not just forced to the search engine. So we've written quite good content on these pages. We've put nice images on there. Maybe put a video on there. I know um, the guys at Brickhouse make some fantastic videos. Um, and they do 360 videos. You could, if you've got an office, you could, uh, you could do a 360 video or any kind of video to say this is our location and again it's shareable content, people love that kind of stuff, it's interesting. Physiotherapists can become bloggers themselves, <coughs> builders can become bloggers themselves. I know all this takes time but if you're serious about what you're doing and you're passionate about, about your industry, why wouldn't you want to blog? 
If you if you run a big company and have say a hundred staff, I'm sure every single one of those staff would have something to say about the industry or a particular kind of service that you offer your clients. Allow them with you know, and obviously have an approval process, allow your staff to write blogs because the best ideas may come from the, the person that cleans the toilets at the end of the day because their observations about a company are just as important as the guy that sits at the top in my opinion. Analyze the performance of your website. Google's got loads of free tools that you can that you can use. And one recently, uh, one of the top tech guys at Google said, um, if your URL for your website doesn't appear within two seconds, Google's now going to use that as a factor to rank your website. So make sure your website actually appears quickly when somebody logs onto it, because there's nothing worse than waiting around 20 seconds in this day and age. Make sure it, Google tracks how quickly your URL comes onto the desktop now, so make sure it loads quickly. If you're uploading an image onto the website, make sure you've, you've down the resolution so it's not a huge file that Google has to, that your website and your server has to actually put onto a desktop because it takes time. So optimize your website, the images and everything going on there and think about it before you post it. Video optimization. People make videos for one reason and one reason only, so people can watch them. So if you're uploading a video, and YouTube, by the way, is the second, second biggest search engine on the planet, think about how you post that video. Think about the title that you write, think about the description, think about the layman's terms of people and how they talk about your product or service because people might have more than one name for something that you offer. So make sure the content that you, that you upload on YouTube is actually you know, widespread enough uh, and, and people when they do search in YouTube for an answer or a solution to a problem, your, your, your video post comes up. Um, it's, it's a very simple process. Just make sure, you, again, your content's unique and, and you go through some kind of uh, an approval process with the, with the people that you work with every day on, on the content that you want to be shown for. But always have in mind, whatever you post onto the internet can be searchable. So make sure people can find it. So, um, a few other key points. I work with, obviously, quite a lot of businesses. Some, some do things in-house, uh, some people work with an agency, some people trust an agency to crack on, others have a, um, huge stringencies in, in applied, but in my opinion, to get to the top of Google, it needs to be a balance between the agency and the guys working in-house. The number of, I work with Andy for example, he trusts us enough to just let us crack on because he knows what, what we're doing is the correct thing for his company. Other companies won't do that, that will take time. But my point is, if you're working with a marketing agency or an agency like ourselves, listen to their ideas and, 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 and get them to show you what they're doing for their other clients as well. Because that's important. I could stand up here today and give it the big one about how great we are and, and what we do, but without showing examples, and, and I can show millions of examples, you won't know the quality of the work that we're producing and what I'm trying to say is, use all these tools to assess what agencies are doing. Because the number of agencies that outsource work here, there and everywhere is ridiculous nowadays. Fortunately, we've got a huge team, so we don't do that. Everything's got a quality control process. And you know the, the agencies know the individuals working within our, our team. And, the, and, and in the main, allow us creative freedom with things, uh, as long as it's in their agenda. And, and, and the other thing is, you can, you can download as much data and analysis of a search campaign as possible, but I think, I am a firm believer if you over-analyze something, it, it can paralyze everything. So there's got to be a little bit of gift in, in the way you look at things sometimes, as well, I, I, I personally feel. Large brands, yeah, look at, look at the links that um, agencies are building for you. The drawbacks of in-house, I personally think, is a marketing manager can get caught up in their day-to-day -day work 
creating content takes time. So, you know, letting an agency do it on their behalf may seem more expensive in the mind, but think about the time you have to create going through the creative process. The agency are doing it day in, day out. And in my opinion, it's far more cost effective to work in that way. So think about how you're going about things. And, and you know, all of this content and these, these words that I'm talking about today are great, but there's a commerciality to it. Look at how much search traffic you get, what keywords turn into sales, and how much money you're making versus how much money you're spending. Simple things like that. Um, and, and, and if you look at the, the, you know, the landscape, you can really prioritize where you're going to make your money and actually be a leader in the market rather than a follower of people. You're going global, has anybody got a global business here? Uh, my personal opinion, it can be argued, uh, you look at big clothes companies that are global, like somebody like Sports Direct for example, uh, and a few other companies, they'll go with a .com domain name. But I think if you're entering a market, for example, we launched in Australia two years ago, buy the localised domain name, the .com.au, or if it's Ireland, .ie. It gives you a far better chance of ranking quickly in a foreign country. Then after a few years and you've got the authority online globally, you could switch to a .com then, but that would involve a massive 301 redirect job. Um, so the main point there, if you're going global, to start with, buy the localised um, domain name. That's your best way of getting ranked quickly and getting exposure across search engines. <laughs> Does anybody get all of their leads via the telephone rather than a contact form, contact form online? My advice to you, if you're getting your leads from search engines and it's turning into a phone call within your business, make sure there's software online now that can record all the phone calls and track it to the keyword that people have actually um, searched. So if I search for bikes today, or let me think of something else like promotional items, or anything, events, a media city came up as a location that I could host an event, I'd then ring that company, you can track the whole journey of the customer, where they started off, what search engine, what they searched for, what phone number, what time of day they called, and you can listen to the call recording as well. That's all available fairly easy online these days. Google have actually launched a tool that will do it for you. Hosting. Uh, I think I mentioned before about the URL. Some people, who's got a dedicated hosting in the room on their website? A lot of people don't realise, they think they've got dedicated hosting, but most of the time they've got shared hosting unbeknown to them. The problem with that is, if you're sharing a server on a particular IP address with a hundred other businesses, what can actually happen is Google will track that IP address and if a website on that server has done something dodgy you can be brought down with them as well in that whole neighborhood of websites so there's tools online um, that's one of the bottom in particular that you can use to check if you're on a shared or a dedicated server so put your website into there uh, and see what comes up and then and then speak to your hosting company or your agency who manage it and it's more expensive to do dedicated, so it's a commercial decision, but I'd advise it uh, and, and just check the scenario of, of, of what you are actually buying and what you, how you're hosted, because it's amazing the amount of people that I meet don't actually realise. Summary, be the news authority in your industry. It's no surprise that if you Google the word news, BBC comes up and then you'll get other people like Bloomberg, etc. The reason for that is they've got thousands of journalists producing content, videos, images daily on the website and I think the BBC comes up number one because they've probably got the biggest history and also they produce the most content. You could argue that all day long but that, that, that's the facts right at this moment in time. Engage with politicians, industry leaders, celebrities, they're all opportunities for you to get content somewhere else pointing back to your site. Again, don't compromise on the hosting. Have a responsive website. Multi-varied content. I know Brickhouse is going to talk about video next. Highly advised video. 
when you go on a page, there's nothing better than watching a video for 30 seconds rather than having to read a load of sometimes badly written content. Develop tools people will share, like the bike idea. And again, remember that um, the, the iceberg theory, like uh, and, and looking at your website online in your industry as an iceberg. Look at all the opportunities and, and the tools and some of the ideas. I'm sure everyone will be able to come up with better ideas than I would in, in their own industry. Uh, think about things in that way. And that's everything. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Um, has anyone got any questions um, uh, for Justin? I mean, you've got you've got the domain name costs every year, the hosting as well. Um, the simple facts are: have you got analytics for each one? Yeah. Look at the traffic. See if you're getting any leads from them. Have a look at your main website. You're getting referral traffic from those domain names, and then probably create a spreadsheet for each domain name. Put the traffic figures. Are you getting any leads? What is the cost? And then and approach it like that gradually um, and then you probably find your answer at the end of that process uh, because it's usual I know like big insurance companies buy out people and other companies buy out people and they want to bury a brand usually it's best to just 301 redirect the old site like I think Aviva did it with Norwich Union um, I think if you search I'm not 100% sure about this but I should probably suggest that they've redirected that whole site into Aviva now so when you search, don't 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 um, don't mark me on these words. If you search Norwich Union, it's just an example. Aviva will come up. Um, Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs>